We're just out here in the wild, wild west right now. It's out getting hot. Get a little dusty out there. Make sure y'all got your masks. Hey everybody. So today, we're out here. We got the sprayer. We have the glyphosate roundup and we have some 2,4-D. So what I'm gonna do is spray um, two quarts per acre of the glyphosate. I'm gonna mix in, um, they call for like a pint or two thirds of a pint for every 25 gallons, 20 gallons. So I'm just gonna splash the 2,4-D in there right now. Uh, I don't, I'm probably going to use this more on my second application. I'm just going to use a little bit right now. I've never used this before, so uh, this is recommended from uh, Jeff Stur Sturgis over at Whitetail Habitat Solutions. Um, he's got some really, really great videos on how to plant, how to plant with herbicide, how to do um, basically the right way to prepare your plots and, and the right way to right way to, to spray when you've uh, planted switchgrass and you've frosted switchgrass. So right now that is what we're doing. We're, we have already put our switchgrass into the ground. We have sprayed the simicene um, and we've let that soak for about two weeks now. And now we're starting to get some green up here and it's about 65 degrees here in Pennsylvania. So we're gonna take the next step and put out the first first uh, round of glyphosate roundup and also we got to put the roundup because for our screen that we're put planning out here along the road um, that's going to be one of the main things we need to do is get that out so we can start getting that seed out here soon so that's what's on the agenda today so the reason I had a McDonald's cup was because that's that's about a quart, a little less than a quart, so we're gonna put two of those in. Well, that's pretty potent. Put one more of those in. There you go, they say a Gatorade bottle, it's about right. Probably a little bit less than a Gatorade bottle. Probably need one, maybe one more. Put a half one in. So we're gonna go a little bit light on this dose. Just because we still we still don't have total full blown green up yet. The main thing I'm trying to get out of here right now is this moss. All right, we see we threw out a lot of lime. So Hopefully that's starting to come into effect and bounce up that pH. Um, and we tilled with the Groundhog Max, as we saw in some previous episodes. And we also, um, like I said, we went over with some areas of switchgrass. And uh, that seemed to, you know, after doing everything, that seemed to, uh, when we put the simazine in, it seemed to kind of break up that moss a little bit, but we still gotta we gotta get that root system going. So now a tip a tip for this: if you are gonna spray, make sure it's not a windy day. It's real calm like this, so you don't have that overspray. Um, especially if you have plants or something, you don't want the Roundup to get on because it doesn't discriminate. It will kill everything. So make sure you don't overspray. Um, also, your PSI, I've read, you know, try to keep it around 20 on, uh, on your sprayer. And other than that, if you ever want to impersonate the Unabomber, it's a pretty good impersonation.
right here is what we're trying to get out. too much of it. Next 10 gallons. <laughs> that is magic. <laughs> that is perfect. Always bring extra water. Be one of our better plots this year. Really gonna take off it. It seems to have some good soil. pH is already good, so hammered it with lime still, and it should should take off well. The thing is, get this moss out of here. Moss that grows here is tough to deal with. So that should wrap it up for today as far as work goes. Um, you know, we've really come a long way here from purchasing this property through Whitetail Properties in December is when we closed. Um, we let the, uh, the people who are leasing this finish out their season. Um, and then I got on right away and started cutting. Um, started cutting uh, started designing the property started walking it and, and really getting a feel for it as far as where the trails were how they went how, how the deer kind of use this property um, this property is right now uh, blew up still this property right now is a more of a transition property coming from uh, bed to food food to bed but uh, it, it does hold some deer but the way it was if I just left it it would be more of a uh, November try to have to have to hit it during the rut type type spot where you couldn't really depend on deer bucks actually living on the property. So, with the help of uh, all of Jeff Sturgis's videos and his YouTube tutorials and you know just his uh, his knowledge, I've really uh, you know reached out to him and, and, and with uh, you know, the designing of the property, the the hinge cuts, the bedding. Um, creating depth of cover, uh, just you know, really understanding the terms that he uses, and trying to design a property that is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see results after you know year one. Um, it's been a lot of work though, and uh, 
you know, we're just kind of getting towards the tail end of it here and, and with turkey season coming in and, and, and you know, getting our, our, our chemicals in the ground for the food plots and uh, not, I'm not planting any spring food plots. Uh, the only thing I'm planting that I have planted already is the, uh, the switchgrass. So we've, we've frost seeded the switchgrass and we've gone back over that um, with the simazine and we've gone over the uh i tilled up you know we had, a, we had a mild winter this year and it was warm so I, I did some tilling up and did a lot of lime put a lot of lime down um and then went through and then uh hit the hit it with the simazine just a few weeks ago and and now we we brought in the glyphosate and the you know the roundup the the, the 24d and we uh hit it with that again the next step is going to be the screening we will plant that here in may um, we will go back over this probably in May, um, the food plots, but if this, but I have to be really careful with, if the switchgrass is taken off, then, uh, you know, I don't want to, on the, on the edges where I have it planted on the edges of the food plots. So that's going to be a challenge. I'm interested to see how that's going to work out. Um, it's going to have to be about a zero wind day cause I don't want any overspray. Um, and then after that. You know, it's, it's going to be time to hunt. Well, it's going to be time to plant our fall food plots. Um, we're going to be planting a mix of uh, oats and, and wheat and rye and uh, on half. And then we're going to do a brassica mix on the other half. And uh, we got the guys from uh, Hag Feed Store. Uh, Keith, he's going to hook us up with uh, some Four Seasons seed for that. Um, and then, uh, you know, then we're going to get into hunting season. So pretty exciting times. Um, with everything that's going on in the world right now, uh, it's a sad, sad time. Um, a lot of people are bummed out. You know, I, I do commercial insurance as my day job. Uh, I have a lot of business owners that I talk to, and you know, they don't know if they're gonna make it through this. So, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of people are in the same boat. So, whatever enjoyment and you know, whatever positives you can find right now, it's important. It's important to try to stay on the positive side. Uh, I'm a baseball coach too. My son's 13. And, you know, he's missing his baseball season. And, you know, hopefully, you know, President Trump put out a, a tweet the other day. It was pretty cool to the little leaguers telling them that they're going to get back on the field. Hopefully he's right. You know, hopefully that is the case and this virus gets through without doing, uh, you know, too much damage. Um, I know it's, you know, even one life is too many, but uh, it's... It's crazy time, so you know everybody. If everybody just does their part and you know be, takes takes responsibility and does what they what they need to do. Um, you know, it's funny. I was in the pharmacy picking up uh, Megan's Megan's dad's prescriptions today, and you know there might have been only one or two people with with one of these on, and you know so people around here are kind of in a bubble. I think they don't really get it. Um, so until it starts to hit home you know they're not gonna take it serious but uh, people need to get a step ahead and I've been living trying to be away from people for the last month since we returned home from Arizona so crazy times but uh, you know I'm praying for everybody out there and I hope you're praying too and I appreciate you guys following this and you know kind of getting you know if, it, if it's giving you a, a release away from you know the daily stresses to watch my goofy face on here building stuff and shooting out of trees and doing whatever to pass the time uh you know i appreciate it and i hope you know hope you guys are you know enjoying it so thanks again and uh we'll keep them coming so see you guys later